On the breakfast, Senator Demola Deleke declared winner of the Oshun governorship elections by INEC. We take a look at the preparation for the elections, turnout, as well as the victory. Also on the breakfast, we'll be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. It's a beautiful Monday morning right here and it feels good to be back on your screen. I mean, just a uh, few days after the elections in Oshun State, it feels like we all have been in Oshun State. But it's going to be part of the conversation on our show this morning as we proceed. I mean, almost everything. Um, I'm sure that even the papers this morning will be talking about, you know, the elections, one of it and all of that. Uh, as always, we start off with a top trending conversation, but just before then, I am Messi Ebukbo. The candidate of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, Senator Demola Deleke, won the Oshun governorship election, and that's been making the rounds. Now, he defeated the incumbent governor, Boyega Oyetola, of the All Progressive Congress, APC. Uh, that's because you have the Independent National Electoral Commissioner, INEC, or Commission, I beg your pardon, announcing that uh, Deleke pulled a total of 403,000 votes, 371, to defeat Oyetola, who got uh, 375,027 votes. So, um, but it, 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 you know, the Oshun election, it just felt like it was a national election. There's been a lot of reaction following all of that. You could see um, a lot of jubilation. I mean, Saturday up until Sunday and, you know, up until this moment, looking at the conversation, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's a lot. But we quickly just look at this track and when we return, we'll talk more. Stay with us. P D P four zero three three seven one four zero three three seven one. We are for the chairman of INEC of P D P. Having satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner. It's very clear that uh, the people of Australia are friendly exercise their franchise. They have made a choice. And I expect the outgoing government to go ahead and congratulate the governor-elect and let's work together. We're all from Oshu State. It's not about, um, it's not a war. It's not, a, it's not, we're not fighting. We're just contesting ideas. We are contest, contesting programs and policies. And the people have made a choice. I expect that they will support manly and they will uh, work together with us uh, and I want to say that on behalf of the governor-elect, this is a government of all. This is the government for all. But what can you say about this uh, victory? Where? What can you say about this victory? This is a victory, which has been ordained. It has been long overdue. But today, God Almighty Allah has crowned the effort of the suffering masses in Oshun State. And Adeleke has been declared as new governor of the state. Well, we, we thank God. We thank all our team supporters. Forget it done, because they stood our mandate in the last election. Us living so knew that our mandate, they stole it. But this time around, God has restored the hope of the suffering man. Well, the dancing senator has not stopped dancing. He's still dancing. And some people say, hey, he needs to stop. He needs to be serious. And... Uh... <laughs> probably understand the reason why he was elected. What it feels like is something about, you know, the family. They seem to always be very happy and it's very important. It's very beautiful to see him pull all of those moves. But most interesting, just before we look at another one, where we talk about the victory here, is that um, if you look at the elections, you would understand that the reason why this um, defeat is, or the victory is eminent is because the PDP, that's Ademola Adeleke, actually won in, you know, in, in local governments where if you win in this local government, then it's actually uh, on top of the game. There's no way you're going to change the game. And number one, it's Oshobo. Uh, the PDP actually won in Oshobo. The PDP also won in Oluru Day. Uh, 
uh, it's biggest. I mean, if you look at this local government, they have a lot of population, densely populated. And for them to win at this, you know, this two local government, uh, it might just be that that's, you know, the pointer to the fact that it's a win. Now, let's also forget that, you know, in 2018, uh, in 2018, uh, he contested for this election, but of course he won by just a, a little margin. He was he lost the election by that little margin, 400 votes apparently, uh, due to what was actually put out uh, inconclusive election, a rerun of the election. But it's good to see that things actually change, and a lot of persons have asked what could have been different this time what really could have been different. But let's quickly take a look at, you know, the dance uh, video, you know, dancing to that victory. <laughs> It's really, it's, it's very exciting. A lot of Nigerians have been, that's the energy everywhere. You see people very excited. And the church is also not left out. You could see that already. He's a great dancer. I, I don't know if he's been given that compliment, uh, but the question is, would he stop dancing now that he's won the elections? But it feels like dance has always been, you know, part of his system, and maybe he'll continue to dance. But don't forget, we will continue to talk about the Oshun State elections this morning as we proceed in the course of the show. Away from that, let's quickly look at, uh, you know, the issue. Very, very uh, important issue or something that happened that's used, it's generated a lot of conversation. Now, an angry Nigerian confronts Iraq Bashola in the United States. Uh, we'll quickly just uh, look at that video. I'm, I'm not sure if we're able to, but if you do have that video, if you haven't seen it already, I'm hoping that we can put it out there for you and we have some audio to that. Uh, quickly. We're having a good time here. Hello. <laughs> Is it that I don't a I just said hello and he left. I just. You look like. Are you a regular? Pardon? Who are you? Who am I? I'm an Nigerian. What do you want? I don't want anything. I saw you. I think I recognize you. I recognize you. Thank you. Uh, no, no. Um, Your Excellency, I have to. You do not give me a survey. No, you can't touch. No, you can't touch this America. You can't touch this. No, you can't touch me. So, Biki, you have to tell me this is America. This is not Nigeria. This is not Nigeria. You can't. No, this is not Nigeria. You can't. You can't just take my phone. This is America. So, you just tell me that this is America. This is a free country. Do you understand? This is a free country. I can do what I like in America. You cannot, you cannot I, I can do what I want in America. Call me, that's my authority. Biden can't tell me that if I want to call Biden. Biden can't tell me that. This is America. If I want to call even Biden. Even Biden. This is a free country. This is not Nigeria. This is not Nigeria. We are live. Don't touch me. If you touch me, I will sue you. I'm an American. Don't touch me. You can't touch me. This is America. If you touch me, I will sue you. And I said, you know. This is a free country. No, you cannot This is a free country. This is not Nigeria. Your life. This is not Nigeria. Biden can't tell me that. You cannot record with an authority. Biden can't tell me that. I have the right to tell This is America. This is America. Biden can't tell me that. This is America. Biden can't tell me that. You are not in Nigeria. This is America. Biden can't tell me I cannot record it. You cannot record with an authority. You are in America. You are in America. You are not in Nigeria. You are in America. This man is sick. Yeah, I'm sick. Sick, yes, you are in America. Um, so you, we, we have uh, that particular video. I'm sure you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, then that's what it is. The Minister of Interior, who was in the United States, we can't uh, verify where exactly in the United States he was, 
but we know that he was in the United States. And you have a Nigerian who seemed to be very angry confronting him and, you know, introducing himself. And you, apparently he was recording, making a video of the minister, and then he went on. And all of that had transpired. And some people have reacted constantly. But let's look at it. Some people say that, oh, it is, you know, very despicable of, you know, the minister at the end of the day. But let's, let's look at some of the issues that uh, the Nigerian had raised. Uh, if, if you follow the video from start to finish, then you would see that he approached the minister. Apparently, he recognized him. And he, uh, the minister asked him, and you're the, who are you and what's the problem? He said, as a Nigerian, he offered him a seat. I think it would have been just perfect for him to sit down and have the conversation, even if you're going to, you know, make a, a recording or, you know, put out a video eventually. But if you look at the approach, I understand that we're very angry, we're displaced with the system, and not those only in Nigeria, but you also have those in diaspora who are also displaced with what's going on in the entire system. But does it call for all of this uh, behavior? So I had statements like, I'm in a free country, you know, it's, this is America, you can't touch me, it's, it's free, I can do whatever I like. No, that's not it. I don't even think that, you know, it's okay. It just shows that, uh, you know, at some point we haven't really understand and maybe we're just allowing our emotions to get, you know, to take a better part of us. Yes, it's okay. But what's the approach perfect? I mean, if you, even if you had anything to say, he, he was gentle enough to offer you a sit. And it would have been perfect, you know, for you to sit down and have a conversation with him or, you know, rant and whatever, and also record it. But it felt like, um, I really don't know. I mean, looking at that video at that point, this is not to hold brief, you know, for the minister himself, but just to say that, uh, what was the intent of, of the person who was recording? What, what exactly was he going to say? He felt like he was just waiting for a point where he could make an excuse and say something. But, you know, two wrongs can never make a right. And you can't say you're trying to right the wrong by doing something very uh, despicable. And you saying that you're in a free country, you can't touch me, you walk up to Joe Biden. You can't even walk up to Joe Biden. You can't because there will be security details. You can't just walk up to Joe Biden that way. And I'm not sure that uh, you will be allowed, you know, to get through with all of the recording at that point. So as much as we say there's a lot of freedom, but does not mean that we should take that for granted. So uh, I know that we're very displeased. I know that we're not satisfied with the status quo and everything that's going on with Nigeria. But let's also not forget that you can't use, uh, you know, a wrong approach, you know, to correct a wrong. So you will need a superior, uh, you know, action or a power or something to correct the current situation. And that would mean that your approach should be different. And so you, for me, I would think that uh, that was a total, uh, you know, harassment and violating his privacy. Everyone has a right to some private life. It wasn't that he told you not to record him. He even offered you a seat. So why don't you have a seat and have a conversation, whatever it was, but it felt like, you were just ready and ready for it. Let's just take it easy. It, it, I understand where we're all coming from, but we can't toe that particular line and hope to get a different result. It would be madness at the end of the day. We get back to this one residents complain of the condition of Ugun State, and you could see that. It might just be the reason why they voted differently uh, this time. You could see the reason why it turned out. Or we'll just quickly look at this one, and when we return, uh, we continue with the conversation. All right, so you can see that the roads are very deplorable. Uh, they talked about the condition of the roads. Uh, they talked about the issue of security. And prior to this election, you've had a lot of insecurity situation in the country where you have uh, uh, court clashes. But look at the roads. I mean, I would think that this is not just applicable to Oshun State. I hope I wasn't Ogun State, I beg your pardon. So it feels like we might just be complicating issues. Now, residents have complete, complained about the condition of Ogun State. And if you look at the roads, I think that this is not just applicable to Ogun State, but it cuts across the entire federation. I don't know if the FCT is out of this, because it feels like those who live in the FCT constantly say, the president might not understand what you're going through. Because every time, I, I know I had a colleague I talked about, and he said, oh no, when you talk about bad roads and you talk about power supply, it's, it's not something that we can relate with, with the 
in the FCT. And so maybe that's why the president cannot understand, but not necessarily that is within the purview of the president, because you also have the roads. I mean, in this state, uh, the state governors, there are roads that should be, uh, you know, the trunk A road and the trunk B road, roads that the, the state governor should be responsible for. And then you could see that the car has been submerged in that floored. Uh, is it something that's quite different from Lagos or other parts of the city? And what is the government across the entire state doing? Because it feels like our government has folded their arms and they're making it look like it's rocket science, it's mission impossible. It feels like, you know, there's really nothing we can do about the floating because I know that this is not a natural occurrence. It's a man-made situation where, the, you know, you have the drainages that have been blocked. You have bad roads. What is wrong with the roads? Why can we have... Um, you know, proper roads, I mean, motorable roads. Why is it that we have governors in different states and you also have a governor in the states, you know, they, they travel out of the country, they go to different parts of the world, they go to different continents, they also go to other parts of Africa where they're doing greatly in terms of infrastructure, they go to Europe and what have you. Don't dare see all of those things. It, it calls for a lot of concern. But, uh, it feels like the people have actually woken up and the people are taking this. These are basic things. It comes to you naturally because you are a citizen. And if people constantly pay their taxes, then what's the reason of paying taxes and not seeing the dividends of, you know, paying your tax? Why do we people pay taxes? Why then do people pay taxes? What, what do we do with the taxes? Why is it impossible for us to have the basic things that we need as a country? The people of Nigeria, the people of Ogun State are not asking for extra. They're just asking that you have basic things, which will also aid you know, businesses. Let's even imagine that um, Ogun State is big on agriculture, and then therefore they have all the uh, crops that they are farming. It would therefore mean that they would need to transport this product you know, to different parts of the country. What's going on? You can't even do that with horrible roads. Look at the roads. It feels like we're in a stone age. It's totally embarrassing and disgraceful, if you ask me. That government of different quarters, including that of a good state, had failed in providing the basic things. What exactly is the problem? I really don't know. I constantly ask, you know, for questions, but I, I'm not sure I get, you know, all of these answers. Why we can have roads, power supply, you know, uh, you know, portable water supply. Those basic things that it's very prominent. Have you ever wondered why Nigerians constantly leave this country to other parts of the world? It's not anything different. It's just that they, they want to go to a place where, you know, there are things, necessary things that are working. And these countries are very big on taxes. Not like Nigeria, where a lot of people evade tax. There's a lot of tax evasion going on. And so just imagine that you provide the necessary thing that the people need. What is, what is so difficult in doing all of this? Why? Have we constantly, you know, made us, made the country not develop? And, we, and, and it's okay for us to, you know, visit all the other parts of the country and it's all right. Why haven't we sat back to begin to think that we need to begin to have the likes of Joe Biden saying he's taking a holiday in Nigeria? You have, you know, prominent persons coming, all the citizens in different parts of the world saying, hey, we're coming to Nigeria. Why can't we live up to the expectation as a big brother of Africa? And the states constantly. What's the excuse? But we need to move away from that. Uh, we also have on our top trending, uh, Winners Chapel Church refuses to wed a couple over lateness. I, I, I went through the story and it's quite hilarious. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm sure that you're going to see, you know, the pictures. So I bring you to a bit of what has actually transpired. Not like we're really there, but uh, we've also done our findings and the reports... Uh, very interesting. So this would not be the first time that a church in the history of Nigeria, a church, I'm definitely not going to mention a name now, but this would not be the first time that a church has decided not to wed a couple due to uh, the issue of, you know, showing up not early. And there's always something called African time. But was this the situation in this particular case? So yes, uh, Winners Chapel Trot, uh, according to the reports, and the post was made on Facebook. You have the Akan P. Udoma, Udom uh, Winners Chapel posted. They said the Youth Avenue Uyo refused to wear this couple because they arrived at a church about 35 minutes late and we gathered around the couple and snapped pictures. At least that's the much we could do. Is this really fair or someone's on someone's big day? Uh, 
that's the, the question that was popped out or, you know, that was asked. And there's been a lot of reactions by Nigerians as regard uh, the issue of cancellation of that particular wedding or the wedding not holding because of lateness. And so people say, oh, you understand the dynamics of the church. You understand that uh, this is when, uh, you know, the 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 church time, I mean, there are rules and regulations. So why didn't the couple respect these rules and regulation at the end of the day? Uh, that question was put out. But let's let's quickly see if we can run through some of the comments. As someone said, lateness is something they announce all through their marriage classes. On the last day of your marriage class day, you will remind you'll be reminded that you tell you also need to understand the consequences. I won't have to go verbatim because it might just be a lot. But um, I don't know why they chose to be an escape goat. Winner Chapel is one church that keeps to time, and I'm sure the, the couple knew about it. And others are saying, what about unforeseen circumstances? And uh, some people say, the couple didn't even respect their day. How can they be 35 minutes late on their wedding day? It means that they're not serious. Winner Chapel, well done, and couples can go back to marriage class. Uh, this one says, there's no amount of lateness that justifies cancellation. And that's exactly what happens when the Holy Spirit isn't in a place. What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Meekness, forgiveness, mercy, kindness, uh, ETC. When churches have become business centers, humanity is left out. Imagine the chunk of people trying to justify. For God's sake, a lot of things can happen on the day to delay a couple from... Uh, you have uh, 40 vehicles, even the clothes they're about to wear can be delayed or something. No one cherishes a wedding uh, up to, you know, the couple and no one would like to. I mean, it's very lengthy. But um, the question then would be, would that be a reason? You also have another person who claims to be an eyewitness. And he said that the real situation is that the wedding was not canceled, but they were asked to fix another date because a burial date was actually fixed. I mean, there was also another event where the church had to attend to. At the end of the day, so you had the pastor who would officiate a barrel of a church member in another part of the state. And so that was why the corporal were being asked, you know, uh, you know what, it's not that it was necessarily cancelled. This is an eyewitness saying it was being said that uh, you had to show up on a latter day. But what happens to church administration? Really? I mean, these persons could be workers. I'm sure that they're workers. They've given all of their time. What if any other thing happened? Was it necessary that the, the uh, uh, parish pastor had to conduct the wedding? I mean, couldn't he have delegated, you know, the responsibility? You have a lot of people working in the church. And so w wouldn't it have been possible for you to have someone else, uh, you know, a member, a senior member of a church or someone, another pastor, who would officiate the wedding and, and that can go on to have the burial? As much as we do not tolerate, um, you know, lateness, but could it have been a deliberate time or uh, you had all of this inconveniences? I mean, these are some of the questions that uh, probably would have not been considered, have not been answered. But let's see how all of this pans out. Unfortunately, uh, that wedding did not really happen, but the couples were seen taking pictures. I mean, the couple were seen taking pictures. They look very, very, very happy in that particular picture. That's the size of a top trending this morning. We we'll take a break. And when we return, it will be time for us to go through the front pages of National Dailies. We beg that you stay around.